Hello. So I'll be talking today about Minecraft and John Dewey, who was a, an American pragmatist who we will cover very soon. But first I just wanted to start with a little conversation about a website called TigSource. Um, it's a website dedicated to video game reviews, interviews with developers and, and commentary on the industry at large. Um, it's one of the largest communities of indie or independent game developers on the web. Um, and uh, the forum attached to it is uh, uh, dedicated to indie game creation. Um, the developers can discuss game ideas, post demos, and um, share <coughs> um, builds and things like that. You know, this symposium is all about open literacy and uh, informal communities of knowledge creation. And in many ways, uh, the TIG source community is kind of the ultimate source of open literacy. Um, it's in every way what um, uh, John Dewey, the, the theorist I'm going to focus on today, uh, would call a community of inquiry. Um, and it's just something I'll discuss in a little bit moment. And if I had, uh, in doing this research, I realized that, that Tick Source as an open literacy community would be a fantastic study. Um, but instead, I've decided to go with the more visually appealing Minecraft. Um, but uh, I think it's a very good example as well. Uh, but it's here on Tick Source that we first um, hear mention of a small developer by the name of Notch. Um, so Notch was a, uh, a coder and, and game developer. He worked for a couple of big game companies in Sweden. Um, but he successively uh, quit any great job that he had for any long period of time to start working in his own little project. Um, and that little project, with the help of um, other developers on TIG Source, um, became the game that we know as Minecraft. Um, main, Minecraft started as a really basic build of an online space, and it took inspiration from various other games. Um, for, its, for its distinctive look and gaming style. Um, for example, the distinctive blocky look of Minecraft was inspired by the game called Infiniminer, which is uh, on the, um, your left, my right. Um, and the other inspirations that um, Notch himself has cited is uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon um, and Dwarf Fortress at the top. Dwarf Fortress is a fantastic example um, of an extremely simplified um, uh, graphics um, a game that has immense amounts of, uh, of complexity. It essentially uses all the, all the different um, symbols on a keyboard to represent a fantasy world where dwarves um, battle against giant spiders and other monsters and, and, and um, create their own uh, little fortress. Um, interestingly, though, the practice of taking inspiration um, from games is not considered necessarily plagiarism um, in this community. Uh, Notch very clearly talks about Minecraft as an Infiniminer clone um, in its early development. And what makes this, uh, what makes TigSource such an interesting place um, is that these ideas are shared freely. Uh, if one person has a good idea and shares it with the community, the other people are going to take that idea and go in different directions with it. There is also an acknowledgement that many of these ideas would not exist if not for the community itself. Um, and so the, the community, it seems, and not the individual, um, is the one that uh, essentially owns um, the, the knowledge that's, that's created through the community discussion. What individuals do with that information, what they produce is theirs, but this is only possible within this community context. So it was May of 2009 that um, we first saw a, a um, commercial version of Minecraft released. And again, Notch handled this slightly differently. Um, in his mind, the game wasn't finished, and so he wanted to add more. He charged a reduced fee for the initial uh, game, it was half price. Um, and he promised that any future updates would be made freely available to anyone who bought the game. Uh, this style of release has, for better or worse, become a fairly common thing among indie developers. Um, it's called early access now, and, and games are often released half finished or um, uh, just a playable version is released so that um, smaller development companies can, can make some, uh, generate some income to finish the game, essentially. Um, in the first 24 hours of release, Notch sold 15 copies. He was ecstatic. Um, but of course it went on to become one of the, the well, became the most um, sold game that we know of today, selling millions and millions of comics, copies. Um, in keeping with his promise, Notch kept a blog about his development of Minecraft and asked feedback from those who bought um, the initial game. Um, people would have suggestions and find bugs. Um, and he'd add new features and fix problems based on the discussions he'd have. Um, and this was the beginning of this online community around Minecraft, which a bunch of players who were immersed in a new online world and who had a vested interest in making this um, something that they wanted to be a part of. And so in many ways, this was always 
Notch's project. He was driving it. He was the, the creator. Um, but he gave a, a fairly large amount of control to the community um, in what the game would become and how it would be played. Uh, for example, Notch didn't ever, ever put in an introduction to, to Minecraft. Um, when playing survival mode for the first time, uh, you dropped into a world without so much as a hint of what even the controls are. Uh, my first time playing, I distinctly remember, I just figured that if I punched a tree several times, a block would, would come off and I could you know, collect the wood from it. Um, uh, when I noticed that the sky was turning, uh, turning orange and then it turned red and turned into blue, I thought, oh, that's pretty. That's really nice. Um, isn't that a nice little feature? And so I was playing around with this wood and I realised you could make wooden planks with it and then with the wooden planks you can make uh, the workbench which is where you can construct more detailed things. Um, when I heard this guttural um, growl behind me, I was wearing headphones at the time, it was late at night, and so I stopped, I, I clicked out of the, the construction menu and noticed that the screen was completely black. Now it's, it's, it's a different image to this one because there's light sources, I hadn't figured out how to make torches yet. Um, and so the screen was, it was black and all I could hear was this guttural and I turned around and the thing that I saw um, was this guy, um, a, a green monster looking thing that started flashing white as it ran towards me. Uh, what I later found out was a creeper. Um, as it exploded I died and uh, that was the first night that I failed to survive in Minecraft. Um, and that happened a couple of times actually. Um, but confused and a little annoyed I went online to see if this weird thing had happened to anyone else. Uh, what I found was several YouTube videos titled How to Survive Your First Night in Minecraft. <laughs> um, from these I very quickly found a series of YouTube channels and websites dedicated to the Minecraft community. From its humble beginnings on Notch's development blog, this community had turned into a living, breathing knowledge community within the world of, uh, uh, with the world of Minecraft as a, as a tub. The community groups that naturally arose from Minecraft in the months and years after its release is a really great example of what Don, John Dewey uh, called a community of inquiry. John Dewey is an American pragmatist and educator from the early 20, uh, well, late 19th, early 20th century. Dewey places education in roughly two uh, different characterizations. The informal education of a community and the formal education of a school. Dewey says that society not only continues to exist by transmission and by communication, but it may also be fairly said to exist in transmission and in communication. Um, for Dewey, um, society at large is made up of a series of communities uh, which are essentially um, people communicating with each other. It's how we share information, how we learn, and how we construct meaning. For, so Dewey claimed that members of a community were not only brought together from physical proximity, um, such as neighbours and family, but also proximity to ideas and values. Uh, he was working in the early 20th century, and so this meant subscribing to certain newsletters, being part of political parties or, 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 or interest groups. However, what Dewey didn't really anticipate, and, and probably couldn't have, was the scope and possibility of knowledge communities in the internet age. The ability to connect to like-minded individuals from vastly different social and temporal locations has had an enormous impact on our ability to create communities of inquiry. Um, the network of online communities that exist today is a testament to Dewey's idea of education. He claims that formal education can only support a relatively low level of complexity, and this is often um, characterised in um, uh, uh, you know, pre-written communities and, uh, and cultures. Um, <clears throat> But once we begin to use symbols to convey, convey vast amounts of information, um, education needs to become more formalised, such as school uh, and, and school institutions. The problem here is that formal education becomes abstracted from the world to the extent that information is no longer situated. Um, knowledge is not understood by doing, but it's understood by memorising. Um, Paolo Freire's banking method of education, if you've ever heard of that, uh, perfectly explains this, where students' minds are empty and the teacher's job is to fill them with information. <laughs> Um, this kind of knowledge, according to Dewey, is irrelevant because it is not useful. Um, so Dewey's great challenge was to create a formal education around the informal structure of a community. He calls this the community of inquiry. In a genuine community of inquiry, information is situated and contextualised <laughs> so that it's practical, but it's also capable of the level of complexity that is required to understand and live in contemporary society. <coughs> These communities of inquiries are like bubbles of knowledge and value sets. Each subject in school we might think of as a different community of inquiry. Um, but outside the formal structure of a school, we see the communities of inquiry in the wild occur all the time. Uh, football supporters, unions, interest groups, and gaming communities are all examples of different um, communities of inquiry. And they are very interrelated. 
in order to highlight some of these features, I wanted to look at a couple of cases from the early days of Minecraft. Um, so the first one uh, is this one. It's from 2010, and asked by going by the handle Halkin, um, updated uploaded a project on the Penny Arcade forums about some Star Trek project that he'd uh, started in Minecraft. And it turns out the project was a one-to-one -one scale replica of the USS Enterprise D from Star Trek The Next Generation. Um, Picard, not Kirk, for those playing at home. So this is how he did it. <clears throat> he found the original blueprints of the Enterprise from the uh, original artist who created from the series. And he layered those images in GIMP, which is an open source image generator, uh, editor. He resized the plan so that one meter equaled one pixel, and then he reduced each deck to a two-color bitmap that was exported as a layer. This layer was then uploaded into the Minecraft level editor, and we end up with a wireframe version <laughs> of the Enterprise that you can see there. I think we also have a slightly... It's massive, by the way. Absolutely huge. So there was significant discussion over several different forums as to whether or not Halkin's wireframe was legitimate whether or not the community of inquiry would accept it as appropriate practice. Um, he hadn't laid down each block by hand. He'd written a program to do it for him. And so some in the community thought this might constitute cheating. Um, this is an interesting phrase to use, though, as at the time, Minecraft didn't have an end game state. There was no way to win this game. Further to this builds, as they're called, were generally made in creative mode, where the game, uh, where the survival and mining was not an issue. Uh, in creative mode, you're given infinite resources and you don't have to um, try and survive. So what was it to cheat in this sense? There were clearly some actions in Minecraft that were illegitimate, according to the community. What was being valued in these forums was creativity and skill. Uh, and it was up to the members uh, of the community to decide which were, what was acceptable and what would, what would be acceptable as, as an example of creativity and skill. And so it was decided that Halkin had done something new and something valuable. He'd had used several programs to create an amazing structure, and while the skill involved wasn't in Minecraft per se, in that it wasn't in um, uh, laying down each of these blocks by hand, it became a valuable practice in the Minecraft community. New knowledge was created. Several new ways of building emerged from this and other instances like it in the early days of the community. For Halkin, he made a public server after uploading this and asked for help in building in all the decks. Um, on a forum of one of the Minecraft sites, he posted a detailed key as to how to go about this, what blocks to use, what colour scheme for each of the decks, and, and that sort of thing. And about a year later, Halkin posted a video online of an almost complete enterprise. These are the blueprints that he used, by the way. Um, so that's the almost complete um, enterprise that he's got there. Um, <clears throat> There have since been many projects like this one, right? Wireframes are shared freely um, so that people can engage in different kinds of builds. Once again, this blurs the lines between the ideas of conventional intellectual property in that they are just shared and then rebuilt and then used in different ways, different color schemes, different um, versions of the enterprise and so forth. What's significant about this story is the way in which the community of inquiry around Minecraft works. Um, Halkin posted his initial project on a Penny, Ar Penny Arcade forum, which is a, a webcomic about two guys who like to play video games. Um, he was also a member of the Minecraft, uh, some Minecraft discussion groups and, and Star Trek discussion groups. But by posting this project, he made a valuable judgment about a particular activity um, and made a connection between these different communities. Um, and various other communities responded positively to this. Of note, Dewey argues that, that membership in any community, um, in many communities, is integral to, the, to ensure no one group forms um, different values for an individual. So the idea being from John Dewey is that if we gain all of our values and meanings from our community groups, it's best to be engaged in many different communities so that we aren't uh, essentially conformed to one sole kind of area of value. In that way, we can evaluate different communities of inquiry um, for their uh, value. And there doesn't need to be one set truth for, for, for value creation. This shows the community of inquiry doesn't exist in specific locations, even online ones as well. The community of inquiry only exists because each member holds to that community, their values, their ideas, and their knowledge. And in this way, Halkin was operating as a member of one of these communities, many in fact, by affirming a new set of values and then sharing it out into the world. I've got one more example as well. Oh, and that's the inside of the deck when they built it. So, my second example is, is uh, all about a uh, uh, material called redstone that can be found in Minecraft. 
Um, with it, you can add power to minecarts. You can open and close doors automatically. You can turn lights on and off. Right? It's, a, it's a very versatile material. Um, but it's uh, far more versatile than, than, than simple functions. Pretty early on, players realized that using this material, you can um, make simple logic gates in the Minecraft world. So a logic gate is a, a binary machine, simple binary machine that vows, allows values of 1 and 0 to be represented by something either being on or off. From here, it wasn't such a big step uh, for people to start creating a sort of physical binary programming in the Minecraft world. This is an example of a one, two, three bit programming um, machine in Minecraft. With this, we can represent numbers up to one, uh, from um, zero to seven. So we can represent eight digits. Um, the first um, side of this, we can represent either on and off. And so we can represent the number one. The second one doubles that, we can represent two and then four. And we can get any numbers in between that up to, from zero to seven. Um, the complexity here, however, is exponentially large, right? From here, we get to something resembling this. Um, the complexity in this image is immense. And what we're looking at might seem a bit nonsensical to you, but in fact, this is a working binary computer. Among other things, this is a calculator. So what's amazing about this is that Minecraft was never designed to be able to build actual functioning computers in. And we might be able to see this one where you see the, the user interface at the top and we'll be able to calculate, um, thanks, to calculate um, uh, numbers, I think, up to six digits in this computer. Um, the community of inquiry has been operating for the last decade, um, has built a body of knowledge that documents to a really detailed degree how this community has evolved. To the extent that when new players begin playing, there's a wealth of information that is available for other players and other members of the community um, about how to play, what has been done, and what can be done. And so we've built exponentially the, the um, base of data within this community um, to allow new members in relatively short period of time to be able to create something as complex and immense as this. This was made in someone's spare time, by the way, in between um, school semesters. Um, uh, he's about 19 years old when, from the, the time it was created. This was during his spring break he made this. Um, And what's interesting as well is that in, in, in one of the other builds, I found this set of comments on a Reddit post about someone who made a hard drive in Minecraft. Um, so essentially, the hard drive at the top, there's a number pad at the top, and it can store strings of numbers in that little chest down the bottom there. Um, but the, uh, the, the post begins, or somewhere down the post begins, someone posted, can someone help me, uh, tell me where I can learn this stuff? Um, and he's met with a wealth of information. In fact, the, the, the various posts we get, you go, okay, so you need to learn this and this and this and this and this. And then slightly further down, we just get links to here's how you start programming. This is the first five things you'll need to learn. Do these things and you'll be able to build something else like this and then, then upload it to this site um, and we'll evaluate it. Um, this, in my mind, is a perfect example of a working community of inquiry that is functioning in the way that Dewey thought it would. Um, and it's a great example of a form of open literacy uh, where knowledge is not just learnt but created and co-created um, by, the, by the actual members of the community.